Welcome to another video. This is your instructor, Advanced Kung Fu from SuperSQA.com. In this video, we are going to discuss manual testing. Okay, what it is and, and everything that has to do with manual testing and types of uh, manual testing. Okay, so when you're doing manual testing, you're basically using the product as the customer, as the end user. Okay, you create test cases, you execute the test cases manually, uh, you work with different teams you manage releases, you file bugs, and you communicate with other teams overseas, third party and such. All of those things we already uh, covered. But the point is, you're doing all this manually, especially the testing part. So creating test cases, even the automation engineer needs to do that, the test case gets created, and then you execute it manually. So to be a manual automation tester, in my opinion, the main thing you need is common sense, really, okay? Good common sense because you are you are technically you are already a manual tester. You're testing things in your life. Whatever you do, whatever whenever you buy something, the first thing you do is try it out, right? Either after you buy it or before you buy, it, you try it out. You see if it works the way you expect it to work. So you need good common sense. It, it's an art, right? It's not a science. It is more of an art than a science. And the only way to get good at it is through experience. Okay. So whenever you take manual um, manual automation well not manual testing training most of the knowledge is going to be terminology a lot of the stuff you learn is going to be terminology and the rest of it is just practice you just need to practice practice and you practice on how to write the test cases or how to document test cases so if you are good at breaking things you will be good at manual testing okay because you're always trying to break the application you want to make sure the application can handle whatever the user does to it Right. So in addition, like a lot of it is you are actually trying to make the application do what it's supposed to do. But at the same time, you are trying to break it and make sure it handles it correctly. And experience is what you need. OK, so there are when you talk about test cases, right, there are you hear the word positive testing and negative testing or positive test case and negative test case. That's, in fact, more appropriate instead of saying positive testing it's positive test case versus negative test case. So a positive test case is when you are actually testing it, if it does what it's supposed to do, right? It does it work the way it's supposed to work. Does it function the way it's supposed to function? And you do the basic things what a user would do on a regular basis. Negative test case or negative testing is when you are trying to break it actually, right? When you're trying to cause an error and seeing if the error happens appropriately. Does it blow up? You know, sometimes, Something bad happens to a website and the whole website goes blank. That's bad, right? It's not supposed to go, it shouldn't go blank. It should give you some kind of message. So when you're, when you're doing that, when you're purposely breaking it and making sure the message is correct, that is negative test case, okay? That's you're negatively testing it. You are looking for error messages. You are looking for, it doesn't like, like for example, a username is not supposed to have a number in it and you type in a number and try to create a user. It does work. If it works, that's a negative test case, but it failed if it worked, right? Because it's not supposed to have a number. I mean, that assuming that's the requirement. All right. So positive test case, negative test case, a uh, common, common term. So a lot of terminology in, in manual testing or in testing in general, okay? You hear a lot about regression test, smoke test, black box tester, white box tester, gray box tester, test case, and use case. Those are very common terminologies, some of them more than others. For example, a test case, right? Even in this course, you heard me use that word so many times because it is, it's very basic. Smoke test is very basic. You use it a lot. So regression, we don't want to get into too much detail about it, but smoke test is like very minimum, like basic, right? Can you log in? Can you log out? Like very basic things, very critical things, like the application, if the smoke test is not passing, the application is not working at all. Regression test is like everything else, all the details, the nitty gritty, and like every little thing you test for, those are regression, okay? And um, use case, a use case is basically what is used for, or how do you use it, right? That's, that's based on a use case, you create a test case. Oh, the use case, like the login page, what's a use case for the login page? To log in, what's the test case? Can you log in with the right uh, credentials? Can you... Do you get the error message if you don't have the right credentials, right? So that is a test case versus a use case. Now, black box, white box, gray box tester, what are those? So most of us, when we start, we are black box testers, same. So actually the next slide, we're gonna talk about the details. So a black box tester has no knowledge of the code, 
right? It doesn't need to know how the code works. Not that the testing code, but that the code has been tested. So if you are testing uh, Facebook and if you're a block block tester, you don't really know how Facebook works in the back end, right? You don't know how the code is written. Uh, you don't have access to the source code. You just use the product as the end user, right? So you don't deal with the code, you actually just use the product. So that's when, whenever you hear black box testing, that's what it means. And that's the easiest way to get in. Like that's easy. You don't really need, um, you don't need much. You just need the will to do it, right? Like I said, you need a good common sense and you need, you need to be interested. Other than that, you can do it. All right. White box testing. So white box testing is when you actually have access to the code. Right, so you're doing both. It's, it's a black box testing plus more. You actually know how the code is. Like uh, uh, Facebook, for example, is written, majority of it is written in PHP. At least it was. I don't know if they've changed it. But PHP was the main language that um, Facebook was written in uh, originally. So if you are a white box tester, you would know PHP. So whenever you see an issue, you actually can go into the code and identify exactly where the code is happening. And you can actually contribute to it. You can even fix it or you can actually pinpoint exactly what's wrong to, to the developer. So you do have access to the source code, which means you have more skill, which means you get paid more, right? So white box tester would, on a typical, right? Like I'm generalizing here, but typically would get paid more than a black box tester because it has more skills. It can do everything what a black box tester does plus some more. So gray box tester is kind of like in the middle. Uh, it's, it's, it does a lot of manual testing. It doesn't have a lot of access to the source code typically, but um, it's, it's just think of it as, as in, in between, right? It's a little bit more technical than black box. It's less technical than white box. It's not a very common term. It exists, that's why I throw it in here, but I, I don't think I ever actually used that term in real life conversations before. But black box and white box, they come up a lot, especially black box comes up a lot. So you have to learn manual testing ASAP, right? There's net, you don't have to wait for it because like I said, a lot of this terminology and the only way you, go, you get good at is with experience, right? So there are, for manual testing, um, I don't do a lot of, I mean, when I started, I did a little bit of manual testing, but I, I love code. So I just went straight uh, into coding, but um, there are a few resources that I could recommend. I don't know how great they are, but you can do your own research, but I do guru99.com have a good education and utest.com has a good education. You know, I, I, I did, I did very small research on that, but do your own research, but those are two good starting points. All right. And, um, when I say learning, learn manual testing ASAP, what I mean is, yeah, go look for resources, but also around you start thinking about test cases, like anything, anything around you, you can test. For example, right, I remember I was in an interview when I first started in this career. One of my <laughs> interviews, the guy just looked around the room and there was a paper shredder in the room. And he just told me, okay, tell me some test cases for the paper shredder. Now I just got to look at the paper shredder and just start thinking about test cases. So as an example, I would say, oh, Put in one paper, does it work? Put in 10 papers at the same time, does it work? Can you put in a paper with staplers in it? Kind of, does it work? Uh, press the button for a, for a long time, does it work? Press two buttons at the same time. Press three buttons at the same time, right? That's a that's a paper straighter, you, it's not a software, but you can come up with a bunch of ways to, to test it. So basically starting now, starting today, right now, Start thinking about whatever is in front of you, right? You might have a coffee cup in front of you. You might have a bottle of water in front of you. It's come up with test cases uh, about that, like a bottle of water. Like how would you test it? Like what kind of things you can think about the bottle of water to make sure it does what it's supposed to do or it does not do what it's, what it's not supposed to do, if that makes sense, okay? So train your mind that way. Train your mind to come up with test cases on the fly. That would be very useful for you.